Hello everyone, at the end of my last video I mentioned this. There is something else I'm going to try, I've got uh, something coming in the post and I'll let you know in due course whether it works or if it doesn't. And it finally arrived, I was thinking it, a few of you commented about it and it's of course the SV241 power and USB hub from SV Boney. So I've bought two of these, I haven't been giving these out to review, this is not a review, I've bought these to use for, on two of my rigs, uh, the more smaller portable rig that I've got and also my observatory setup. I want to try a few things, see how things go. Uh, if you want to catch some reviews off the top of my head, I know Astro Bloke channel, Luke from Luke and Matico, he actually took the thing apart, which was quite interesting. I know the Astro Shed channel, he's also recently brought one out and I know Simon's Astro is, I don't know if he's brought one out yet, but you know, go check him out. There's absolute mountain of reviews out there on this. It's making some racket on the Astro scene. So yeah, hope you stick around and uh, enjoy the video. So very warm welcome and welcome back to the channel everyone. Hope you're all well sitting on the other side of that screen there. So you've joined me, I'm a little boy, he's joined me on an absolute glorious day. It is a scorcher, it's only nine o'clock in the morning here and it's, I'm already sweating. It's anyway, yeah, lovely day. Task at hand here. So the SV241 power and USB hub. So like I said, not a review. I will run through some of the features as and when I'm going through the video, but I'm not going to go in there mass in depth about everything. I want to start by saying a fantastic price for what this is. I bought this for £55 uh, on Amazon. But I've stick them on a couple of rigs, see how they fare up for me personally. There is a couple of little niggles that I'm not really happy with that I think should have been on there, but yeah, I'll run through them as well and yeah I do know that I went on the SV Bunny website and I do know there's a, a more advanced version of this coming out so it'd be nice to see what improvements they could make on this and you know, what features that would have looking forward to that but yeah let's uh, let's crack on and show you the first rig <laughs> so I'll secure this on it looks nice and tidy I think uh, nice and secure on there. I've utilised one of the screw holes that's on the bottom of the hub here. Quite similar to the SI, yeah, actually. Uh, it's a one quarter inch hole. And I've just used a little hexy screw or bolt to secure that on. I did have the Pegasus Dewmaster on there, actually. I was powering this rig. Uh, there's a couple of 12 volt outputs on that with some dual heater band outputs as well. Nothing wrong with that, but... Yeah, let me show you what I've done. So I've got a 12 volt coming in using the cable that was provided with the hub, uh, that type connector. And I've got a couple of options here. I can either use this adapter and plug it in, plug it into one of my power supplies, but I've also got one that can just, this can plug straight in. So a bit of option there. Coming out at the bottom, I'm not utilizing too much on the hub. Um, using the two five volt USB output at the bottom, power only. I've got one going to the Starventure Pro here and another going to a dual heat band. And then utilizing one of the 12 volt outputs, I've got a dummy battery cable going to my DSLR camera here. Just to point out, this is eight volt, 12 volt coming out. So I've had to put a little voltage step down or resistor so don't fry the camera. I have took it out for a little test run. I did some dark frames, had it, uh, everything on full power. Everything seemed to be fine. I'm going to try and do an image session, it, providing the uh, sky is clear tonight. and get a couple of hours in and see how it fares up then. This isn't asking for a lot of power. It's quite a low power system. Yeah, one reason why you can put AA batteries into the Star Venture. But yeah, so yeah, like I said, ready to go. Let's move on and show you the observatory rig now. So I have fixed the hub onto the scope here utilising the finder scope shoe and I used the again one quarter inch screw hole that's in the bottom here and I just fixed one of these brackets on. Similar to what come with the SIR, I think I got them from Amazon again, I'll, I'll leave links for as much as I can. Uh, but yeah, it looks quite tidy, I'm not sure if I'll keep it there but yeah, it, it'd be alright there for now. Excuse the cable management, uh, I'll tidy that up later, but it's all over the shop at the moment. So the things that are coming out of this hub, I'm utilising two for the 12 volt outputs out of the total of six. It allows a maximum of 10 amps in total out. I've got one cable going to the mount, 
got one going to the ASIA and I've got one power cable coming out the ASIA going to the camera. That's it. But of course, the, the mount data, um, camera data, everything, all that, that's still plugged into the ASIA. So I'm um, taking up both 5 volt USB ports and they're for my two heat bands. In the past, I've been using 12 volt. I decided to knock that down. I've had to put on these little controllers, which isn't a big issue, but yeah, I can't control that from the ASIA anymore. On this side, I thought I'd point out you got USB C, two USB 3.1 ports, and a USB 2 port. And there's also a couple of indicators 5 volt and 12 volt indicators that you know that that's on. And at the bottom here, you've got a PC interface slot, and there's actually a cable comes with the hub to plug into there. And finally, power input 12 volt in. It will allow 12 amps over extended period and I believe it's 15 amps at peak. The power cable itself I checked has actually got a 15 amp fuse in there. So to power this I've got again two options I can use the power cable provided I've got something to plug it into but I've also I thought I'd plug in I've got a 12 volt 15 amp power supply. It's a little small amount I'm gonna if I'm gonna use this I'm gonna have to get about a bigger cable but that's power on that and yeah, I will show you this up and running. It's a bit warm here, it's getting really, really warm. So I'm deciding I'm going to wait until a little bit later when it's cooled down, a bit darker, to fire it up and show you how it performs. Before I do that, I just want to share a few little niggles I've got about this. You're not deal breakers, of course, because I bought the things. But yeah, for the price, I'm not expecting the creme de la creme of devices. You know, but here we go. So I think this should have had an on and off switch similar to the ASIA, so you could power the thing off. Or maybe some individual buttons, little buttons on the ports to turn each port off, because you can't do that at the moment. Um, I've got an example here, you know, I've got a power, powered USB hub here with individual buttons that you can turn off and on the, the each port. So that would have been a nice touch. Uh, I, as far as I'm gonna, this isn't waterproof. I don't know how not waterproof it is. Uh, it would be interesting to see what this is going to do in the winter when there's frost on it. I do personally, you know, a bit of prevention, tape the ports up if I'm not using them. I do that with the ASIA. Uh, you can't see it. I do do it on the other side. So I suppose, yeah, we'll see what happens. Play that one by ear. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not a bad device. Just a few little niggles. The thing's solid, full metal body. And as far as things goes in the price tag, it's, it is a nice little device and I am happy with it. Thought I'd share that with you. I don't know if anyone else has been thinking the same thing, but yeah, I thought I'd throw that out there. Okay, so this is all fired up, ready to go. I've got everything on full wax, so the heater bands, I've got them on maximum. I normally wouldn't have them on full power, but I wanted to draw as much power as I possibly could. I've got the camera, try to get the minus 15, whether it gets there's another stuff, but it's on full whack. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to return this mount to its home position so it's going to move both axes at the same time. Now I've tried this out, I uh, hooked this up to my new Jackery 1000 here which by the way I've got an absolute bargain on that, uh, nearly half price on Amazon, I'll, I'll leave links in the description for that, absolutely brilliant. Uh, but yeah it was drawn about six, up to 65 watts which works out around uh, 5.4-ish amps, so loads of capacity left. Uh, the odd ball on this is, of course, the mount, which I've only just recently learned from your generous comments off my last video, that this prefers 13 volts or more. Um, I honestly wasn't aware of that. You know, I've had the mount quite a while, so I must have been living under a rock or something. But I suppose, you know, if uh, you don't know something's wrong until something goes wrong do you and then you find out all sorts so yeah every day's school day in this hobby so they will return this to its home position now so since introducing the sv241 and and had this set up the way i have now i've noticed the mount is a lot more responsive there's no led light flashing anymore so no power drain on that. Also the ASI air, I noticed that it hasn't dropped below 12 volts either. 
where it was sort of getting close to 11 and it was thrown up a warning. So since introducing this little box here and configuring it the way I have with this setup, seems to be doing the trick. One power cable as well. Absolutely brilliant. So I've double checked the weather forecast. It is all go for an image session. I'm gonna get all of three hours maybe because that, this time of year, that's all you're getting really, isn't it? The Jackery, I'm gonna power the smaller rig with that because I haven't tested that out yet. And uh, that is gonna really be much of a drama, but nevertheless, it's gonna be powering that. I've also swapped out my Zenith Start 61 for a 50 millimeter lens as well. So fancy trying a nice wide shot tonight with that rig. So, so we'll see how the night rolls out. Stand by for a final thought on all this. That wasn't a bad little three hour test run to be honest everything went smoothly no dramas whatsoever i have to say it was a little weird doing a manual pull line on my small rig i haven't done that in such a long time it must be a couple of years since i did a manual pull line <laughs> anyway so i know i wasn't utilizing everything that the sv241 has to give it was mainly for power reasons more so for the observatory rig but i I'm guessing I'll, I'll use and utilize more and more of this as and when, I suppose. While I'm at it, I might as well share what I captured. Not fully processed images, um, to be fair, that they could do with more exposure time, but nevertheless, I want to share them. So this one here is from my smaller rig. So the frame, I would say, is slightly off. Uh, you can see the elephant's trunk in there and North America and Pelican Nebula, but I think it's a great little capture, to be honest. And this one is from my observatory rig. And I actually love this. I love that sort of ring of all three in the middle there. And I believe this is LBN 182 or in the region of. But I'm definitely going to try and get some more exposure time on this. Well, time to wrap things up, I suppose. Hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. Found it interesting. Also, thank you so much for your continual support of the channel. It really does mean a lot. And we're going to leave it there. Take care, everyone. Clear skies. And until next time, bye for now.